Uh, just cats every fucking where. Where'd you go? Come here. Oh, you're in your little drum den, your little catnip arch. This is little Dottie. She's the master of the big eyes. She does them better than anyone, don't you? Yes, you do. And she loves belly rubs. Grady, if you, if you put that mouse in your water dish, I'm going to come up on you. <laughs> don't you? Don't you do it. I do love belly rubs. Belly rubs put me to sleep. I got a broken cat. No, you didn't. My dumb is all hell. No. What's going on? Who's that guy? Dottie was afraid of the television for a while. Every time it would move, she would dart into the couch. But we've adjusted. Are oh, you going to lick your butt on the internet? That's nice. That's good. Oh, she's yeah. taking after Miracle, so... Show the whole internet how you lick your butt. She's she's take, definitely taking after Miracle. We're pretty sure Miracle gave them some tips. Because yeah. there's a few things where we're like, yeah, you've been talking to somebody, haven't you? Peggy, come here. Come here, baby. No. No? Okay. All right, sorry. Hi. All right, so... So that's been the big excitement around here. Now that we've we've done all the cat stuff, what are, don't you even fuck kitty? God damn it! He's like, yeah, he's got his mouse and he's like, it over like Taylor Swift with the phone in the blank space video. Like, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it, motherfucker. Don't get, don't you talk back to me. You know better. <laughs> okay, don't put your damn cat in the water. Don't okay. you just god damn it. Are we going to hide behind the guitar? Okay. Hide behind Cats the guitar. Everywhere. Okay. Don't you, you son of, don't you fucking. <laughs> I'm watching you. I'll do it, motherfucker. I'll do it. Anyway. It is that time. Let's get the intro going before we just do cats all. God damn it, Grady. You're upstage an asshole. Come here, baby. Anyway. Don't, don't come here. Okay. We're going to run one way. Okay. Each week. Catherine who goes out in the world and the world and the radio dead air audience while on the worldwide interwebs find all sorts of horrible shit. Grady, I swear to God, <laughs> bring it back here for we'll say we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And oh, Grady. Grady's like, there's fucking kittens. I gotta up my game, man. So lonely. Uh, so this week, this past week, Obama, our president, made a trip to Manhattan. And he uh, he saw one of the well. I'll, I'll let the video tell the story here. Oh right, he was on Jimmy Fallon. Yeah, he he stopped by Jimmy Fallon, did the whole slow jam in the news and shit. It's great. And of course, he what he was not aware of was the fact that bicyclists in New York are not the smartest creatures. Watch this guy getting tackled as he attempts to bike right the fuck in front of a presidential motorcade. What are you doing back there? Don't play with wires. I don't know what they're playing with. Yeah, the city bike program for non-New Yorkers out there, they basically put city Citibank sponsored this and all over Manhattan there's long racks of bicycles that you can rent right and just ride them around they're they did it to try and reduce traffic congestion encourage bike riding this that the other which is great but you don't have to know anything about bike laws or how to not be an asshole on a bike in order to get one I so you get idiots on city bikes like riding on the sidewalk and shit or Trying to cut off the presidential motorcade. And as you all saw, there are barricades and big flashing lights and, and fucking SUVs and all of this shit that pretty much says, hey, I yeah. shouldn't be here. There's pretty obviously something going on there. But in this case, he decided I shouldn't be here doesn't include him because he's special. Which apparently the city bike does come with the sense of entitlement that all bicyclists, well, not all bicyclists. I look forward to your tweets. Dude, that I, the militant wing of 
enthusiastic bicyclist seems to enjoy. I Here in delightful uh, Shermer, Illinois, it's a quiet, sleepy little town. And sometimes I like to walk down to the store because it's not that far away. Why should I drive? And it's a nice day. So I walk to the store. And what constantly fucking happens to me, I'm on the sidewalk. I'm not in the road. I'm on the sidewalk. And from behind me, I hear, ring, ring, motherfucker. And I, and fucking bike. Now, he could have slowed down. He could or have stopped. Or not been on the sidewalk. Or not been on the sidewalk. But no, no, it's, it's fucking bike. So, Because the thing about you get these cyclists that think, Whatever rules are inconvenient don't apply to them. So if the sidewalk is crowded, they're in traffic and expect you to treat them like a car. But if there's like a red light that they don't want to sit through, boop, boop, they, boop, boop. all of a sudden they become a pedestrian by magic and you should treat them like a fucking pedestrian. You can't have it both ways. No. You're either a vehicle or a fucking pedestrian. No. They, and I tell you, God damn, they, they are very, very aggressive for people without things like seat belts and yeah. airbags or and a crash. box encasing yeah. them they are very aggressive about that yeah it's, it's what are you doing back there it sounds dangerous stop it come out here get out of the bar she's not going to listen to you for god's sakes get out of the bar we have to build doors for the bar because Dan has some very expensive booze in there. Luckily, the cats aren't big enough to really mess with it yet, but they will be. There, there's um. This this drives me nuts. Okay, so we've gotten this this sense nowadays, and it's been presented to us by many of our popular media icons that haters are a thing. Yeah, and you ain't nobody if you ain't got no haters. So pretty much, I hate a hater. Fucking is, Beyonce is generally they're just like, oh well, whatever I do, you're just going to hate it. So I'm just going to do anything without any sense of shame. Now, to be right. fair, there are trolls who are just fucking toxic assholes. On the other hand, this has this trickle down effect to people. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll let this story speak for itself, at least in terms of this. This is something you should probably be ashamed to do. Look at these fucking mugshots. Oh, yeah, these bitches. Women with kids assault McDonald's employee for being too slow. And they're fucking grinning in their mugshots like they're proud of themselves look, because they're assholes. Look at... At these, oh, look okay. at these motherfuckers right here. Three Ohio women are accused of assaulting a McDonald's employee because they thought she was working too slowly. Police in Bellevue charged Ashley England, Mary Jordan, and Sammy Whaley after they were led after they were led to the trio with the help of store security footage. Authorities say two of the women's children were present during the attack. England and Jordan were also charged with child endangerment after police say their two children participated in the assault. Yeah. England was also charged with theft. However, it's unclear what she was accused of stealing. The statement said the women assaulted the employee in the parking lot because she was working too slowly when dealing with three women and their family and friends. You know, it's not bad enough that you're probably pulling down $8 an hour to get burned with hot grease 16 times a day in an awful, hot, itchy polyester uniform, and they think free shitty food is a perk. Yeah, you need to get your ass kicked in the parking lot by some bitches who think you didn't get their kids McNugget Happy Meals fast enough. And we've lost all sense of goddamn shame. Yeah, because they're grinning like motherfuckers in the mug shots. Like, they are proud of themselves. Taylor Swift says, hey, just got a hey. Yay! Look what we did. Yay! Because your special snowflake child is the most important thing in the world. This, Which, you know, to you, your child should be. The, the, this... To the rest of the world... If little Madison with three D's and two Y's doesn't get her chicken nuggets in five minutes, 
not a single like gosh madison's probably not gonna die it's, they're proud of this shit Hold up here now huh are you beating up her tail you beat up that tail hey hey no chewing on faces we like to bite each other's faces well they're cats don't no biting faces okay hey, what did i just say she doesn't care she's a cat tara they're gonna right. do that and they wrestle, and it's really cute until one of them starts squeaking in distress and pain. And that's usually when I get all mommy on them. Right, girls? Yeah. And then we just start over, because we don't care. <laughs> Grady has decided to poop now. That's what he thinks of this, so... <laughs> um, Fuck you, getting little kittens. God um, damn it. He is furiously pooping. Am I, am what am I, I just, just too old for you guys now? Showbiz is bullshit. So, yeah, just motherfucker. If there are things to be proud of in your life. Yeah. This is not one of them. No. And the best thing is, there are now websites out there that employers look at that look up arrest records that mm -hmm. contain your mugshot. So this is kind of, this shit here is kind of immortalized. It's not now. even that. It's This is the example they're setting for their children. Like, these are the kind of bitches whose kids, who, like, when their kids are in college and get, a, and get an F because they got too wasted and didn't turn in their final project, that their mothers are going to call the college and expect that grade to get changed. Tara, Tara, Tara. Let, let, let's, let, that, that's a little harsh. I mean, it's not like these, their kids are getting into college. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, Dan enjoyed that. <laughs> as, as someone who's gotten a call from a right, parent, Dan, yeah. Dan, Dan taught a few semesters of college and actually got that call from a parent. <sighs> it does happen. It's true. So last week we had the guy. Hey. We had the guy who decided to steal a tire because. Okay. It's CrossFit. To, to steal the tire off the top of a fitness. And, you know, we're like, what the fuck was he thinking? This next one is sort of like that. Is that serious police action going on where you are? Yeah, probably. Fucking bicyclist. Anyway, um, at least that guy, he did not seem to give a fuck. Who was watching him steal this tire? My God, what the fuck is going on? I know, on there? like. Anyway. Did, you talked a little too long about your stash of guns. I did, I did. Luckily, yeah. you're white, so you're going to be fine. Yeah, I'm fine. Anyway. This, this, this guy does not give anything resembling a fuck about what he's doing. MPD searches for suspect who used blowtorch to try to rob an ATM. What? And the best part about, I'll show you a little bit of the video down here. It's not, it's not a He's whole lot of going his face. On. But there he is with a portable blowtorch trying to carve his way into an ATM. Huh. Would that work? No, because he didn't get any money. Oh. I mean, it's industrious. But he just, with the cameras, he just casually strolls up to this ATM and starts trying to carve his way into it. Memphis police searching for a man who used a blowtorch in an attempt to break into an ATM in downtown Memphis. The episode occurred at the Memphis Light, Gas, and Water Office Building at 12 p.m. Sunday. It was captured on video surveillance. So he walked into this... this Gaslight and water office with a blowtorch on a wheel, just wheeled in this blowtorch like it weren't nothing. <laughs> he was just like, yep, a dip a do. Just hanging out with my blowtorch. And just try, and then when it didn't work, he just sort of sauntered off again. Why would you have to wheel in a blowtorch? Isn't it a handheld device? Well, the gas tank. Oh. Big old red yes. Police looking for a man who was wearing a straw hat with a white towel underneath. He was last seen wearing a gray sweatshirt with a red Echo Unlimited logo, gray pants, and mismatched shoes. 
Left shoe was red gay, gray, right shoe was royal blue gray. Oh it's my also, God. Oh yeah, he's, he's wearing two different shoes. Look at that. He also had a red luggage type backpack with wheels that contained the blowtorch. He didn't give anything resembling a fuck. He watched a little too much MacGyver. <laughs> I, what I love about this is after all the work and effort he put into this, he didn't get shit. He didn't get a dime out of that, that ATM. ATMs are meant to be pretty, like, if there's a nuclear holocaust, forget the Indiana Jones jumping in a refrigerator thing. Try and get your ass inside an ATM machine. As I understand it, they are the most indestructible technology on Earth. I don't think I could fit in an ATM, Tara. It'd be the safest place. Like, as far as I'm aware, you're better off inside there than you are, like, a Sherman tank. Because they're just impenetrable. Oh, uh, they have to hold on a second. Uh, I'm gonna contact gross. lens? Yeah, I'm going to gross out everybody. My contacts shorted out. Hold on. Ah, I hate when this happens. Uh... I'll try and distract them with kittens. Come here. Yeah, Grady, I know. I know it's gross. I'll stop. Hi, my name is Dottie. I don't want to be picked up right now because I want to chase my sister around. Hi. Ah, that's better. All right. I'm going to kick my human. Now everybody just had to deal with me sticking my finger in my eye. I think we'll edit this part out. Can I go now? Okay, I'm going to go now. Where'd your sister go? Oh, no. So yeah, kudos. I, I give this guy credit for at least trying to plan something, but... They're telling me ATMs are actually really easy to get into, so okay, my bad. I haven't tried. <laughs> they made it look really hard in that one episode of Breaking Bad. <laughs> well, to be fair, that one episode of Breaking Bad is a couple of meth ads. True. Now, our, our next story is kind of... A little bit yay, this is neat, and a little bit, wait, what? <laughs> and uh, so the, the yay part is a crime was prevented and stopped. Yay! The wait what part was how? Witnesses say man lassoed suspected thief at Eagle oh. Point Walmart. Okay. A man on a horse oh. chased down and last but lassoed a suspected thief at the Eagle Point Walmart. They say a woman was yelling about her bike being stolen. A nearby man unloaded a horse from a trailer, lassoed the man, and pulled him back toward the store. They say the man grabbed onto a tree and wouldn't let go. So, so he had it like he's on his way to the horse show because we've all seen those trailers, the horse show or whatever, or the rodeo, I guess. And then he said, you know, you're at the Walmart with your horse like you do, yeah, like you do. Help, help. Don't worry. And then the theme song starts playing. Don't and you worry, little lady. The fuck happened here? Okay, you're a good citizen. I'm. You're a weird good citizen. I'm happy that you went with the rope and not a gun. Yay, very good for you. On the other over with the horse. Yeah, that's another good one there. On the other hand, what the hell just happened to my reality? Yeah. Because this is like some Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure shit. Yeah. You know, the good, the bad, and the Walmart. That's 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 our that's our theme. That's our title for this week. I can't there beat that go. one. I can't beat that one. The good, the bad, and the Walmart. I, it's, it's, Can you imagine being someone seeing this happen? Like, a, like, you're driving by and you see some dude, you see some fucking Lone Ranger motherfucker. Come galloping up on a horse and lasso a dude on a bike. You know, my ass would be like, it's like, what the fuck did the Circle K put in my goddamn drink? Yeah. The fuck? When did Starbucks start putting crack in their iced tea? I know, right? 
All right, it got way too quiet. What are you talking <laughs> We get very nervous when we don't hear a constant jingle, jingle, thud, jingle, jingle, thud. What have they decided to get into now? I think they they were fighting in the carrier, so we might have decided to fall asleep because sometimes they fall asleep while they're fighting. Okay, yeah. And then they wake up and fight some more and then fall asleep. Like you do. Yeah. But yeah, th this is... This is one of those what's happened to my world moments. Fuck your stolen bike. I have a horse outside. <laughs> well done. All right, Kimosabe. The sales are starting. <laughs> I also love this. No, there's no video, sadly. If there were video of this, I'd be playing the fuck know, out of it. That'd be the best day ever. There's just this photo here. But if you, you had kittens and a horse chase for you. Yeah. We would retire after today. But I love that this guy just grabbed the tree and was like, no! no, no, you'll never take me alive. To be fair, I'd be kind of a, I'd be kind of scared shitless at this point. Be a little unnerved. Because a guy just roped my ass like I am a calf. And the his question is, did he get the bike back? Oh yeah, they got the bike back. Okay, because I'm picturing him catching this guy and the bike rolling off into traffic. And him being like, well, I got the varmint. That's great. My bike just got crushed by an 18-wheeler. You've done me no good. Well, I mean, this guy, I, 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 this is a good guy. I'm not going to discount what you did. No. You're just a little weird, man. You're just a little weird. Because I wouldn't have been like, wait a second, I've got a horse. Let me get my horse. Yeah. <laughs> you know he was waiting for this moment his whole life. Yeah. It's like, the time has come. And like, was the horse already saddled in the trailer? Maybe. If not, this guy is really fast. I know. Like, how fast is that horse? Because if that horse wasn't already saddled, that would take some time. Now it's time for fire. Fire! Oh, for fuck's sake. So, <sighs> we've had this. Okay, internet, we've had this talk. When you get broke up with, let it go. That, that just that's if you if you're your significant other, if you suspect your significant other is cheating on you, you have a conversation about it. If it's your house, you kick them the fuck out. If it's their house, you pack your shit and go. It's that simple, really. That's that's how we do. This is not how we handle our situations. Northside man torch car over suspected infidelity. Lacrosse man was arrested Friday after police said he set fire to the car of a man he believed was having an affair with his girlfriend. Was he fucking her in the car at the time? No. Thank God. Uh, author spoke with Christopher M. Johnson, who was sitting on a porch directly in front of the vehicle Drinking from a can of Pap's Blue Ribbon. Of course it was goddamn PBR. Of course it was. Johnson, 35, said he had never seen the car, didn't know what happened to it, and was not telling the officer anything. He went upstairs while the officer checked the vehicle's registration. When the officer knocked on his door, Johnson answered and asked whether he was going to jail. This is the best part. The report said he then asked if he could go to jail for setting something on fire. Yes! That's an important thing to know before you set something on fire. And it's not something you ask the police officer responding. No. It's a little suspicious. Wait, that's illegal? I can't set other people's shit on fire? You're kidding me. Well, I had no idea. Johnson told the officer he had used charcoal and lighter fluid to set the blaze. During the questioning, his girlfriend came downstairs and Johnson said, I set the car on fire. Carl, Carter told police he had given Johnson's girlfriend a ride home from a bar, but he'd had too much to drink and left the car parked behind her house. Which is even better. This is just a white trash of Palooza going on right here. He drove home from the... He drove her home drunk, which, great, yeah. But then decided he couldn't drive himself home drunk. Yeah. He said he'd never met her or Johnson before. The girlfriend said Johnson came home, accused her of cheating on him, 
He then went outside and returned smiling and saying he burned the car, at which point she looked out the window and called 911. So many questions. Okay, he, so you find a mysterious car in your driveway. Right. You think perhaps your live-in girlfriend brought another man home. Right. Probably your first course of action to, should be to see if there's another man in your home. Because you live there. And she's there. Mm -hmm. So if she brought another man there, he might still be, he might be trapped in the closet. Maybe. All R. Kelly and shit. But even still, at that point. You still don't set things on fire. This is when it's time for a conversation. Yeah. Not, not arson. Arson. Also... <laughs> Why the charcoal? It's what he had on hand, I imagine. You, but the light charcoal doesn't just light up, you know, unless it's like treated charcoal. It doesn't just light. You have well, to. Like, he did have a PBR. Maybe he was. Maybe he was going to barbecue some fucking kale. <laughs> or some vegan burgers. Uh, oh, totally. He was. Arson around. Yeah! Oh, really? Really? That's something only our UK viewers are going to get. The arson around. That's that's nice. That's nice. I get it. Well, you you're you are you're mostly Irish, so you know. But the, the charcoal is the part that gets me. He already set it on fire with the lighter fluid. He's like, no, no, no. This needs char because there's nothing quite like arson. But even better, there's incompetent arson. <laughs> I don't know. It sounded pretty effective. I don't think... Maybe he just didn't want the fire to smell bad. <laughs> gonna get, if I'm going to set this fucker on fire, it's going to be hickory spoked. Yeah, like a charcoal fire yeah. smells nice. A motor oil fire smells horrible. <sighs> Maybe he was being considerate of his neighbors. I also love that he just sort of hopped up on the porch and watched it burn with a PBR. Like, yeah. like, you know, this is his afternoon. Yeah. Everything's going to be fine. No. You got to admire a job well done. Someone is going to call the police if you start setting cars on fire. Maybe it'll be your own girlfriend. Cars on fire is, is not the kind of thing that that people... Are, Ignore. No, no, that's kind of conspicuous. They tend to notice that. But you know. Why is it so quiet in here? <laughs> are they dead? They are not dead, Dara. They're just asleep. They're cats. They do that. They sleep in the carrier. <laughs> are they looking at you like, what? Okay. Are you guys okay? It got really quiet. Yeah, we were taking a nap. God. <laughs> What's your problem, man? But wait, there's even more fire. Ow, 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 ow. You have foot needles. Remember that. Okay. There we go. But, but there's even more fire. More fire? Because while this guy setting the car on fire, yeah, okay, that was stupid. He's actually better than our last story. Hmm. This is one of, have, have you had roommates or lived in an apartment complex before? Yes, both have, of those things. Have you had roommates fucking loudly before? Uh, no. Well, yeah, my freshman year of college and I was on a bunk bed that was right next to hers. And so I had to look at the guy's ass thrusting too. Well, okay, that's that's in the same room. I was thinking, like, in a different room. And then you got expelled for using heroin. Lovely. I, I've I've had roommate. I've had the loud fucking roommates. And it's just one of the... I've had loud fucking neighbors. It's just one of those things you've got to deal with. It's, you know, you, you can knock on the door and say, Hey, please. <laughs> I understand you're having a happy time to keep it down. Or you at the extreme, you can call the police. What you cannot do is set the apartment on fire. That's not going to make you sleep any better. 
Man set fire to apartment to escape sex noise. Albuquerque. I mean, I guess that you'll re replace it with screaming noise. Albuquerque, New Mexico. Authorities say an Albuquerque man took drastic action to escape the sounds of his neighbors having sex. He set fire to his own apartment. Albuquerque Journal reports that Reuben Cook took police Sunday, told police Sunday he, quote, tried to burn anything he could think of in his apartment to run from the annoying sounds. Criminal court uh, complaint filed in Metropolitan Court says police found minor fire damage when they arrived at Cook's apartment. The complaint says the 36-year-old Cook told police he heard people having sex upstairs and decided he wanted to go to prison and get away from the noise. Other places you could go to get away from the noise. <laughs> the local diner, have some pancakes. Pancakes are better than arson. Outdoors, take a walk. Walking, better than arson. Literally anywhere else. Yeah. A, a porta john. Like, how is that your leap? Like, well, the neighbors are having loud sex again. I guess I better set my house on fire and go to prison. <laughs> How, now, okay. Do you think there's going to be less noise in prison? Because there isn't. On the one, but I'm thinking, uh, another part of me is thinking, what exactly were the noises he was hearing that were so bad that made him decide, I need to go to prison? That's, <laughs> that's it. Is fire. What are you hearing? What are they doing? How freaky is shit getting? <laughs> you haven't been watching Preacher. The, the first episode, this kid comes to him and says, my dad beats my mom. I need you to do something about it. And it turns out that is not what's going on. And after the preacher beats up his dad, his dad has to have a very awkward conversation with his son. And good yeah, times for everybody. What are you hearing? Are there like animal sounds coming from up there? Are you hearing like, you know, weird chanting and shit? Are you... Is it like, oh, yes, fuck me harder, fuck me harder, Satan, fuck me harder. I mean, what the They're fuck? actually are you... just playing the scene with Satan and Saddam Hussein from the South Park movie over and over <laughs> on the loop, trying to drive this guy insane. I mean, just what are you... They're not even a couple. They're not even interested in each other sexually. They're just playing that scene on a loop because they hate their neighbors. They're just going to find the worst of Pornhub and just... Putting up like a 5.1 surround sound system in the bedroom, yes. going into the next room and like reading Martha Stewart books <laughs> while the shit's going on. Exactly. I mean, what what the fuck could you possibly hear up there that would make you go, "Yeah, prison sounds like a good place." I, the only I, solution is fire. The only yeah, I've I, I I've had a good life. It's it's time to be done. Because look at these babies. I see them. They're so sweet, huh? And now you're going to wake them up. Hi, Dottie. I know. You're okay. Peggy, you can pet. She won't even wake up. Dottie will wake up and then just pass right back out. Oh, babies. You know, it's... It's... I have heard... I have had some loud roommates before i've had loud neighbors before but nothing has ever made me said you know what prison <laughs> prison be pretty good right about now let's start setting things on fire i mean i had the heroin addict thrusting five feet from my face. <laughs> and he used to leave his fucking he used to do chewing tobacco and he'd leave his spit cups oh, all over our room. oh yeah and yet oh. i didn't set anything on fire Oh, just oh, awful. Oh, that's... and I still didn't set anything on fire. Oh, no. Anyone watching right now, if you're doing chewing tobacco, you need to stop that. That yeah, no, first no one's one... disgusting habit. Yeah, that's not good. And just, so, I mean, I love, I love that. That's a quote for the ages. Even when I had the heroin addict thrusting near my <laughs> face. That that's 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 one we're gonna live with. Uh, Dottie, well, Peggy was named after Peggy Carter, and if you watched Agent Carter, which you should, Dottie 
was a new roommate in the building she was living in who actually turned out to be basically like Black Middle Black Widow Mark One. She was one of the first class in that Russian spy training program. So hey, Grady, Peggy Grady. and Dottie. Grady, you want a treat? You want treats? Come on, let me bribe you. Spoilers, it's last fucking season. Cry about it. Let me bribe you. Come here. Let me season two is already over. I'm talking about season one. You asked me. Come here. What's this? Is this food? Is this food? No, Come on. no, fuck you. I'm not a kitten. I guess I'm not good enough for this show anymore. Come on, you lazy no, shit. No, whatever. I'm just a big, fat, stupid cat who drops shit in my water bowl. This show doesn't need me anymore. Go to hell. The, the, the treats are up here, dumbass. Poor Grady. We still love you. Come here, buddy. Come on, buddy. So, what have we learned this week? We have... Life is not a great plan. No, it, 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 you know what? If the sex noises are so bad, you feel like you need to go to prison. That's, yeah, here you go, buddy. There you go. Or that if you think your girlfriend is cheating on you. Yeah, that's, that's not, you could probably, the, the, the sex noises, noise complaint will probably solve that. Yeah. Not going to prison and also potentially cheating on you. A conversation will solve that. Also, I love, I love how he asked, could I go to prison if I for setting something on fire? Yes! You know if things are felonies before you do them. We have, it's cold arson. We have a whole bunch of laws about that shit. A whole lot of them. We've learned that some... <laughs> there are good people in the world. There's, sometimes they're just really weird. Yeah. You know, your hero might be straight out of a time warp. I mean, that that that, that would that's the kind of thing that makes you question your reality in new and yeah. interesting ways. We've learned <clears throat> that not only will people try to steal anything not nailed down, they will try to do it without giving a fuck. <laughs> Goddamn blowtorch and security. I ain't care. I'm getting my fucking money. No, I'm not. Okay, fuck it. Whatever. I'll try the next one. I'll try the next one, yeah. We have learned that sometimes shame is good. If you get arrested for, incur for assaulting a McDonald's employee, you need to be ashamed of that. Yeah. You, that is... Because you, you're, you're, you're a real huge asshole. Yes. And finally, we've learned just because you're saving the earth and you're getting fit on your bike and, and you're doing good does not mean your ass gets to drive right in front of the fucking presidential motorcade. Nope. No, it doesn't. Yes, we certainly don't get to drive by and like yell at them about their carbon footprint or something. Yeah, the, the, the president always has right of way. He does. All way. I don't care if you're a pedestrian. I don't care if you're a bicyclist. I don't care if you're a car. The president always has That's right one of, of the perks of being the president. Yes! Like, yeah, somebody might shoot at you. Yeah, you have to make horrible decisions. Yeah, they confiscate your credit cards. But you always have the fucking right away. Of course, that means if Trump becomes president, he's just going to start driving over everybody. So He would do that anyway. 